At some point in many people's lives, they reach a moment when they can no longer care for themselves. This is a challenging and sorrowful time, both for them and for their families, particularly due to the significant decisions that must be made. One of these decisions is whether to place our loved ones in a nursing home. No one wishes to be separated from their family and rely on others for their care. However, there comes a time when we must accept this reality and do what we believe is best for everyone. Unfortunately, things do not always unfold as expected, and sometimes we inadvertently place our trust in those who are undeserving. Joy Lewis, 71, from Nottinghamshire, England, was a strong and happy woman. Most importantly, she was a good mother and an exceptional grandmother. By the time she was older, Mrs. Lewis had accomplished a lot. She graduated with top honors from law school and quickly became a successful lawyer, working for one of the biggest law firms in the country. People always sought her out for legal help because she could solve their problems, whether they were innocent or guilty. Joy was proud of her family above everything else. She often said that her family was the best thing about her life. It doesn't matter how many cases I've solved, how many diplomas I've hung in my office, or how much money they've made me. Without my daughters, my husband, and grandchildren, I would be nothing, and I would be lost in life, she said whenever someone asked her about the success of her career as a lawyer. Joy married at the age of 26 to another lawyer she met at the firm where she worked, James Lewis. Both she and James were two talented young people hungry for success when they met. When they fell in love, their priorities in life changed completely. They wanted to start a family, and the sooner the better. They had no desire to wait. Do you think we can be parents and good lawyers at the same time? Joy asked her husband when she was five months pregnant with her first daughter, Madison. We'll be fine, I'm sure of it. I know you're scared and doubting yourself, but that's normal, my love. I'm also scared and find it hard to sleep thinking about when our baby girl arrives. But knowing you'll be there with me makes the fear go away. I hope you feel the same way about me because I'll always be here for you, he said gently, trying to reassure his wife. I understand, James. I just want to be a good mom and not let my career get in the way of that. That's why I married you. You remind me of what's truly important in life, our family. You're my guiding light, and as long as we're together, I'll always find my way, Joy said, resting her hand on her growing belly and looking lovingly at her husband. The truth is that neither of them was wrong. First, Madison was born, a cheerful, unruly little girl who brought the house to life with the sound of her laughter. And just a year and a half later, the couple welcomed their second daughter, Eleanor. Both were intelligent and tremendously happy children who had the good fortune to grow up in a strong and loving family. Perhaps that is why, many years later in the twilight of their mother's life, they both did everything they could to make her happy, so that she could say goodbye to this world without suffering. They fought to the end for her, unfortunately, much more than they could have ever imagined. Eleanor was the only one of the two sisters who decided to follow in their parents' footsteps, becoming an excellent family law attorney. Madison, on the other hand, devoted herself to teaching and work as a professor of literature at Oxford University. Both were intelligent, insightful women with big hearts. Joy and Lewis had raised them well, and for them, as for their parents, family was the center of their universe. So when hard times came and their parents began to age, they were there unconditionally. They cared for them until the end, no matter how long and painful that might be. The first to get sick was their father, Lewis. He had always had heart problems, nothing serious at first. In his family, there had been already cases of heart attacks, so he was always trying to control it and take care of himself as much as possible. One morning, however, his delicate heart gave out. He was seven years old, and after spending two weeks in intensive care trying to recover from the last attack, his body stopped fighting. It was possibly the most difficult moment the Lewis family had to face. They'd always stuck together, no matter what, and now suddenly one of the pillars of their lives was gone. It was as if the light of a great lighthouse went out, leaving everything in darkness. I'll never be able to move on if he's not by my side. Your father was my world, my best friend and mentor. He was everything to me. He's gone, and now I don't know who I am. Joy confessed, devastated, days after her husband's funeral. Joy felt her world split in two. The sadness consumed her, and although her two daughters tucked her in so that the pain of the loss would end, she began to lose the will to live, and her health deteriorated rapidly. As a result, there was nothing and no one capable of giving her back the joy and zest for life she'd always had. However, the worst was still to come. Just a year after losing her husband, Joy was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. At first, it was small oversights and barely kept her from doing routine things, but within months, her health took a turn for the worse, and the disease began to take its toll. When Joy Lewis' Alzheimer's got so bad that she needed round-the-clock care, her daughters had no choice but to find a nursing home. During the first months of the disease, Madison and Eleanor took over the care of their mother, but at some point, the situation became untenable. 
What I'm about to say hurts me as much as it hurts you, but we have to be honest with ourselves and admit that we can no longer take care of mom by ourselves. She's very sick and needs constant care. Even if we wanted to help her, we couldn't. She needs qualified people to take care of her and improve her quality of life in this last stage. We should place her in a nursing home. I know one I heard very good things about. It's the most appropriate thing to do, Eleanor said to her older sister one morning as they ate breakfast together. You're right, mom needs specialized help. I'm not going to argue. We have to do what's best for her and the family and right now, we've already reached the limits of our possibilities. She'll be much better cared for in a nursing home, I'm sure of it. Madison admitted with resignation if she tried not to cry. For the past few weeks, she hadn't stopped watching her mother waste away and that had shattered her. A few weeks later, Joy was in a nursing home that Eleanor said was one of the best in the county, so they felt safe to leave their mother in her care. Unfortunately, nothing was as they imagined it would be. During the first few visits, everything seemed to be going well, and their mother showed no signs of getting worse or feeling uncomfortable. But over time, during visits to their elderly and demented mother, they realized that something was not right and that something very serious was going on in that facility. Joy looked happy, but her daughters noticed that her wrist was bruised and her skin was covered in bed sores. At first, the sisters decided to act on their own and try to find out what was going on without calling the police. So during one of their visits, they managed to install a hidden camera in the room to find out what was really going on. What they would discover a few hours later took their breath away. The images recorded with their camera were so disturbing they had no choice but to call the police. The footage captured by the secret camera showed three nurses verbally abusing Joy, denying her diabetic food and drink, and ignoring her pleas that she needed to go to the bathroom. In the footage, she could also be seen being forcibly grabbed by the wrist and dragged out of bed while Joy cried incessantly. Both sisters were very upset and quickly contacted the relevant authorities to put an end to this terrible situation. The police did not hesitate to arrest all the nurses who appeared in the recordings and after spending two months in custody, they were brought to justice so that the full weight of the law could be brought down on them. During a trial, the nurses admitted what they had done and were given suspended prison sentences and community service for two years. However, Joy's daughters were not satisfied with that and after getting them convicted, they started several social media campaigns demanding the mandatory installation of quality security cameras in all nursing homes. We will keep fighting for real justice. These women won't get away with abusing a vulnerable person. Their cruelty deserves harsh punishment, not just community service. We won't give up until the justice system listens, said Madison at a rally outside the courthouse. They also got permission to share the images of their mother's abuse, sparking outrage among social workers who called for tougher sentences for the caregivers. Madison and Eleanor hired a caregiver to look after their mother at home, unwilling to risk her safety again. May we all be as fortunate as them to have such loyal family members when we reach the end of our lives. Their love and dedication deserve our utmost respect. What do you think of this story? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you.